Okay, so we're in the shop tonight, and I got my new fuel line, uh, my old fuel line, which is like 30 years old. Uh, alcohol destroys rubber, among everything else. <laughs> Even marriages. So I've heard. Um, so I got new AeroQuip number 12. This is uh, three quarters of an inch. You take whatever size it is, and you divide it by 16. So 12 divided by 16 is three quarters. This stuff is 10 bucks. No, 11, 12, 12 bucks a foot? <laughs> That's when inches matter. <clears throat> so I'm going to make two of them tonight. Um, and here's my old fittings here. These are Goodrich fittings. These are old. This is what the inside of one looks like. This is called a cutter style. You can see that little black ring around there. It's, uh, some people don't like cutter ones. And what it does is it cuts, if you can see here, you see that little groove in the rubber there? See the black groove? Well, that cutter actually cuts right through the center of the uh, hose. This cutter, see that black? And these are kind of worn, but I'm gonna use this as a backup. I got new ones from Fregola. And of course, they're a little bit different in size. They're a longer neck. And this is a non-cutter style fitting. See, that's a non-cutter. And these are hard anodized, um, versus these are not hard anodized. And hard anodized is nice because when it's in the presence of methanol, it uh, keeps it from corroding and pitting and so forth. So the first thing we do is I squared up the end of the uh, braided. If you've ever worked for, worked with this stuff, let me tell you, you know what it's like. It is, oh, it's, it hurts. See these? See the little braids there? Um, oh my gosh, those things, that, oh, you grab it wrong, <laughs> you won't do it again. So the first thing I'm going to do is I trimmed up the ends, got them nice and square, and I wrap it with black tape to keep it from fraying, which it will do. Then I'm going to cut this one right there in the middle, and I'm going to do, I'm going to make the old style ones first, and then the new ones, uh, I've got to kind of inch into it. Uh, slowly because I want to make it perfect instead of when it goes from fitting to fitting I don't want it completely straight I want a slight bend in there and then these are the nuts which I'll get into it's kind of interesting how you put these together it's kind of a bitch but uh, it's why they call them aircraft style because they don't leak okay so let's get to part two okay so there's all different ways to these glasses make me look like a bug. <laughs> There's all different ways to cut braided. You can use a saber saw, a hacksaw, cutoff saw. I actually use a chop saw with a fine uh, tooth blade. Uh, so I have it all set up like this. Of course, I can't show you the exciting thing because I need both hands to do it. But I got all my safety tips from a guy that did this for a living. He always told me what to do and not to do. But I, start, I stopped listening to him when he earned the nickname Two Fingers. <laughs> he, lost, he lost two fingers on a chop saw doing this. So after Two Fingers became Two Fingers, I don't listen to Two Fingers anymore. When he says, oh, that's the way you're supposed to do it, I go, okay. <laughs> True story. Two fingers. There we go. Five finger, no, four finger, five finger, 500 feet, four finger taco. Going to cut this now. Oh, man, this thing was loud. Okay. So after you cut it, you can see it kind of pulls some of the uh, braiding out. So we're gonna dress it now. That's why we always cut a little bit long. I'm gonna dress it on a grinder on the side, and then we're gonna get it nice and square because this is one of the good times when it's good to be square. So let's get it ground up, and then we'll go to fitting. So my buddy Two Fingers, he always said, wrap it with, uh, actually duct tape works the best, but I don't have any. So we'll wrap it and then we'll come in here on the side of the blade and just very slowly we're going to square it off and get all those loose ends. But this has a tendency sometimes to grab so I'm going to turn it off because I'm not going to become two fingers. I still want to be four finger 500 feet taco. Okay now so the next step is I got the ends squared off really nice. You see that? I actually used a belt sander afterwards. See how nice it is? It's nice and square. And I always leave a little tape on it because when this stuff starts um, unbraiding, oh, it just it, it takes off. It starts looking like this. It just goes everywhere. 
All right, so here's the nut. The nut, this is really, really weird how these work. So the nut, I'm going to screw in to the hose, like so. And it takes a little doing. So as soon as I get these nuts on, I'll come back. Okay, so I forgot the uh, cut that I did for the blue ones is shorter than it'd be the black ones, or they want to be longer. Because um, the black ones, because they're <clears throat> longer, the... Anyway, long story short, uh, I had to put the red ones on because this is for the red one. Now, if you look, you want to get it... I don't know if it'll focus. You want to get the squared end all the way up to the end where the threads are. There's a, uh, there's a lip right here. So you got to squeeze it, which is why I didn't do it on camera because... <clears throat> It's like doing this. So now we're going to go to the next step, which is putting this in here, but we got to lubricate this first. <clears throat> and I normally use something that's really slippery. I just use like assembly lube. Some have told me KY works because it's non um, uh, oil, it's water based instead of oil based, and it keeps the rubber from swelling. <laughs> I'm not going to have any KY oil in my shop. <laughs> I'm just telling you if it went viral. So now we're gonna go to the vise with the soft teeth and we're gonna hold this and we're gonna put it together. Okay, so we take our fitting. I treat these like with kit gloves because I gotta tell you, these were like 40 bucks a piece. I got almost a hundred bucks in this little fuel line. But we're gonna take our uh, assembly lube and we're just going to throw some on the threads. And the cutter. Like that. Look at this stuff. Okay. It is really sticky. There's a lot of molly in it and no KY. Absolutely not. But two fingers, that's what you used to use. It says, oh, keep the uh, keep the rubber from swelling. <laughs> and we got pills for that. <clears throat> All right, so this is bottomed out on the a on the um, braided line. And then you turn, you can only turn so far, and then we're gonna go put this in the vise in soft jaws. And we're gonna hold this in a wrench, I think it's like one inch, and then we're gonna take this with the 15, 16. I'm going to slowly tighten it. It's amazing. The first time I did this, I went, man, this isn't going to work, but it does. So let's go do that now. All right. So because I don't have a cameraman and uh, Reapy doesn't have any thumbs, so she can't hold my phone. This is the goofiest thing. This stuff drives, this stuff just drives me nuts. So the red part of the fitting is 30 millimeter, right? You can see it here in the vise. 30 millimeter, except the blue part, is one and one sixteenth, right? What were they, what were they thinking? Oh, let's make the red part metric and the blue part US standard. Let's, let's do that. Oh, we, we should shoot all the English people for developing the metric because I know it's easier to do. Everything's divided by 10, but now we got stuff that takes both. So not, you don't have to have 15 wrenches. You got to have 30. All right, so we're going to tighten this up and I'm going to show you the finished product in just a moment. So when I'm all done, as you can see, this is all done. You just typically leave a little gap there between uh, both pieces. I like to have this flat even with the other flat. It drives me nuts if like the top of it here is here. And the nice thing about these are you can adjust them. And I don't know about the Fregoli, but these are floating. I don't think the Fregoli are floating. These are actually more expensive, but um, I couldn't find them. So we're gonna have a backup because as you, uh, the line 
I like to have a little bend in it, as you can see, instead of going straight to straight, so it gives it a little shock. Actually, this one's gonna be a little bit like that. So this one goes on the tank, and then it's gonna bend. It's gonna bend a little bit up and then go to the pump. All right, so let's do the other one, and we'll see if it test fits. Okay, so there's the um, old style, and uh, we're gonna swap this one on real quick, too, just to make sure it fits. Uh, by the way, these are called AN fittings, AN, as in Army, Navy, okay? Uh, just that's what AN stands for. So here's the, uh, this is hard anodized for alcohol, and uh, let's go put it on. All right, so here's the, uh, we're at the bottom of the car. So here's the, uh, this one, and through the magic of editing, and we got the black one. Um, I'm not sure which one I'm going to end up using, but this one's hard anodized, so it lasts better. So that's it. What a pain in the butt. Now I got to do the one to the hat, which is a little bit easier because it's only uh, three eighths. And then we're going to fire it. Okay, that's it. Hope the um, little demonstration on how to do AN fittings came out. They came out really nice. I got a spare one now. I kind of like the red and uh, blue one, which is the original color back in World War II when Army Navy developed these 37 degree flare fittings, but these are hard anodized, which will mean it'll last a lot longer with alcohol. So my final comment is, I had somebody last week, uh, because they saw my car in the um, on Facebook, and they go, dude, how'd you learn how to do all that stuff, and how do you afford it? So here's my answer. One. I'm a boomer. I wasn't raised with all these video games and Xboxes and all this crap that kids do. I was like 13 years old working on my parents' carburetors in their uh, mid 70s. Um, my mom had a Cutlass, my dad had a Tornado. And back then, emissions started getting, they just started doing emissions, and mom and dad's car wouldn't start up, it would stall all the time. So I got books on Rochester carburetors, Carter carburetors, and stuff. And I learned what the problem is. I was, I was 13, 14 years old, pulling apart carburetors and stuff. And my parents' cars were really fast. In fact, mom was mad one day when she got on the freeway. She goes, it, it burned rubber after I left the intersection. <laughs> so I just learned to do it. Instead of sitting there, I, I got to tell you, video games, they are so fay. I said fay, F-A-Y. You don't learn anything other than shooting, killing things or whatever. And I do that with pig hunting, and I'm doing it for real. But if you guys, if, if you're a guy and you're doing video games, stop it. That's all I can say. I mean, you're not learning anything other than how to move your thumbs. I mean, it's it is ridiculous. And how do I afford it? Hey, I'm single. I'm not bailing anybody out of jail. I'm not getting their car out of inbound. <laughs> I mean... I mean, I had the biggest pay increase when I became single, so <laughs> that's how I afford this stuff. Anyway, I hope this uh, video helps. If anybody has questions, if they want to do AN fittings, I'm going to do my, uh, I said this was 3 eighths. This is actually half inch because 8 divided by 16 is half inch. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to fire it tomorrow. I'm going to put, oh, check out these mufflers. The guy that I bought these from, he said, your car is going to be as quiet as a Tesla. And I'm like, no kidding. He goes, oh, yeah, dude, it'll be like your golf cart. So they're just they're connecting up to the uh, the collector. Here's four inch, and they go to th uh, three and a half inch. And I may run some pipes out in front of the back wheel, but it'd be like the Tesla. It'd be like, <laughs> taco is out.